they are required to remove it from your file. Hello fabulous people, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Maura Millie here. So today we're gonna to be talking about how I got my credit score from 430 points to 785 points. Yes, it's very doable and you can do it too. So let's get right into it. No one told me when I was growing up that, oh, your credit is very important. You need your credit to do everything in this country. I was not educated like that. So if I have any young ones here, I'm glad you tuned in. Your credit is very, very important. That being said, I'm going to get into how I fixed my credit. So my credit score was 430 points. So I had to get it up because I wanted to buy a house. I want a car. Everything you need, you need credit in order to do it, right? Um, nowadays, even jobs are searching they're, they're checking credit scores. If you want to work at a bank, they check your credit score. So you have to make sure that your credit is on point. So how did I do mine? Now, the first step you need to do right now is you have to check your credit score. In order to build your credit without knowing what you're dealing with, how are you going to fix it? You have to fix, check your credit score. So how do you check your credit score? Do not go to Credit Karma. Do not go to Borrow Well. Do not go to anywhere like that. If you're trying to fix your credit, I'm not saying those platforms are not good. They're very good if your credit is good and you're just monitoring it. You just want to see what's going on on your file. That's fine. But when you're fixing your credit, you want to check your Equifax, TransUnion, and Experian if you're in the U.S., you have to check all of them, not just the one. You don't pick one and say, okay, I'm going to check my TransUnion. No, the information on TransUnion is different from the information on Equifax. So you have to check both and fix both. So I pulled both credit scores for when I was building mine. My Equifax was 430. My TransUnion was 510. They were both poor, so I had to fix it. Now, what I did was I checked the file. When you open the account, you check it and they give you the score. You can go to credit details and it will give you the breakdown of the stuff that you have on your file. Then when you go into details, you will find your collection accounts um, that will be listed on there for you. So my collections account were five. I know my open account was one capital one. You have to do it one at a time. Tackle it one at a time. Do not get overwhelmed. That's the biggest mistake you, you can do for yourself to get overwhelmed because you will probably neglect it again. Thinking this is just too much. I'll just wait for the seven years for it to fall off. When you have good credit, it's easier to secure lower interest rate loans. It's easier. It, it just makes life easier. So um, you have to tackle it one at a time. So what I did was I went into my collections account and I saw, okay, which one is higher, which one is lower. I had one on there that was $115, $115. And it's on my credit file, ruining my credit. Like, how did I get there? You must be really careless for that to happen to you. Well, I was. So I decided, okay, I'm going to pay that off. Um, so at that point, I didn't know that you could dispute your collection accounts. So I called them and I asked them, okay, if I make this payment, can we make an agreement that you remove this from my file? You always have to come to an agreement with them if you have to pay for collections. You always have to let them know that if the only way you will pay is if they agree to remove it from your file. And that's the only way you'll pay. If they say no, you have to escalate it. Like make sure you're getting it off, off your file. So when I called, they said, yes, if you pay, we will get it off your file. So I made that payment. It was 115. I made that payment. And a month later, it came off my credit score. 
my, my credit file, sorry. And guess how much points I gained? 32 points. I gained 32 points. Now, after that, I'm like, so this actually works. You just have to get these things cleared and your credit goes up. Because when I what I thought was once your credit is gone, it's gone. No, your credit, once it's gone, it's not gone. You can always bring it back up. So I'm like, okay, let me figure out. These ones here, I had one that was like a thousand dollars, one that was like five hundred. So I went back on YouTube and searched. Okay, um credit collections, how to deal with collections. And one video said you should never pay for collections. You always have to dispute it. So I'm like, oh, how do you dispute? <laughs> so I search for that. And it's so easy to dispute collection accounts on your file. You simply go to the credit agencies. So Equifax, TransUnion, Experian, they all have dispute forms on their website that you can fill out or print and fill it in. And then you need a letter. You always have to attach a letter to it. So I went online again, Googled Equifax dispute letter template, TransUnion dispute letter template, and they all come up for you. You just have to fill in your information, the credit information, and that's about it. You put it together with the form, the, the, the dispute form, and you mail it into each one of them. So when you mail it to them and they receive it, they have 30 days to respond to you. 30 days. Now, the 30 days, what are they doing? They're actually waiting to hear back from the companies that you owe. So the collection agencies that, that are saying you owe them, Equifax is waiting to hear back from them to say, yes, this lady owes this money. She needs to pay. If they don't hear anything, under the law, they're, they're required to remove, Equifax tries to be an experience. They are required to remove it from your file. I did not know that. I would have done this a long time ago. So when I sent it to them, I got the letters and guess so what? None of them responded. They removed each and every four collection accounts. They removed all of them from my file. So now, from five collections accounts to zero collections account, nothing on my file. And I only had to pay 115 because that one, I didn't know at that time that I could dispute it. But now you know, so you're going to dispute every single one of them. So I disputed. I got the, the email, um, the letter back and everything was being removed. Guess how much points I gained? It was such a huge jump, huge jump. I gained 150 points, 150 points. On top of the 32 points that I gained from paying that 115, now I gained 150 points. So at this point, my credit score is in the, it's already in the 600s. And I'm like, how did, how did that happen? <laughs> Just like that. I thought, you know what? There was no fixing here. Nothing is good. No, you can definitely fix it. So that's how I removed my collections accounts from my file. You dispute. Now, I've actually helped a friend who disputed and they actually responded and said, these files are accurate. That brings me to my next step. If they contact you and they tell you, or Equifax TransUnion and tell you that this is accurate on your file, accurate information on your file, and we're not removing it, da, 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 what you do is you contact. At that point is when you contact the collections agency and then you negotiate with them. You act, if the fact, let's say the bill is $1,000, and you don't have a thousand dollars. You don't have to pay a thousand dollars. You can negotiate with them and tell them, I can only pay 200. Guess what? They will agree because these collection agencies, they're buying these files accounts at a very low rate. They're buying it for so cheap because the companies that we owed originally, they, their insurance companies already cleared your bill. 
and then the collection agencies come in and buy that bill from them and then they start harassing you so when you contact them after you've disputed and it was not removed you have to negotiate with them that i can only pay this certain amount i'm not paying this full amount and also i need you to remove this from my file after i've paid so that's what we call settling so you settle that um that bill you are going to settle with the collection agency now if they don't remove a settlement from your file it looks really bad a settlement can actually sometimes hurt your credit then um then help your credit so you always have to have them remove it from your file so um yeah so that's what i did for my friend and it worked out for her perfectly so you can do it too if you're not so lucky that the um the collection agencies respond to these um credit companies and sorry the credit score companies and they say you owe it you have to also contact them and tell them i'm not paying the full amount give me a discount and they will definitely do it so what i did next after my credit score jumped 150 points i had to then go to my credit card that i had on file it was a capital one card it was not a huge credit limit but i maxed it out it was a hundred percent maxed out that's hundred percent credit utilization that's the worst thing you can do for yourself when you're building a credit your credit utilization always has to be below 30 percent 30 percent so let's say you have a credit card that has a balance of that that has a limit of one thousand dollars you can never spend more than three hundred dollars never you can spend it, but you can never have a balance of more than $300. So if let's say you're buying something and that thing costs $1,000, you can use your credit card to buy the full $1,000 if your limit is $1,000. But you have to make sure that right after you make that purchase, you're paying at least $700 because if your billing cycle comes and that four thousand dollars is on there that means your credit utilization is a hundred percent and they don't like that the credit system just doesn't like it it doesn't work for it so make sure it's lower so i went on and um, started making payments on my credit card i had to stop so many things like stop doing my hair stop doing my nails stop buying clothing stop that clothes you are buying you, you don't need it you don't need the clothing you're buying stop buying it you have clothes you have shoes you don't need it what you need is credit build your credit so i stopped buying because i needed to pay off that credit card um so i paid it off it didn't take me long i paid it off and once i paid it off I gained, I think, 18 points or so. So at that point, I was, because <laughs> you need a minimum of 620 to buy a house in Canada. A minimum of 620. And so I was more than 620. And so I was eligible to buy a house with that credit score. Now, um, I wasn't ready financially to buy it, so what i did was i kept on making payments every month on my credit card now if you don't have a credit card let's say you've paid off all your collections and you have nothing on your um, account that's not good either you need credit to build your credit i don't know if that makes sense so let's say you have nothing what you need to do is if your credit is still not good no bank will give you a credit card or loan so what you can do is you can get a secured loan most banks offer that mine was from capital one i got a secured loan from i'm um, sorry a secured credit card from them and what that usually does is you apply they let you know okay if you pay 75 dollars we'll give you a thousand dollars if you pay 300 dollars 
will give you $300. Depending on how bad your credit is, um, they will let you know what your, your payment is and what credit they're giving you. That's how the secured credit card works. So I had a secure credit card. So at that point, I had already paid off the balance and I was using and paying, using and paying, not going over my not going over my 30% um, utilization. And as the months passed, they, um, I got a letter from Capital One that they're increasing my credit limit to $2,500 because I was being such a good, good um, person to them. <laughs> I was paying my bills. So they, um, they gave me $2,500 and I said, yes, I want it. Never say no to credit. That's one thing I can tell you as well. I'm not saying go take it and go spend it. No, when they offer you, especially if it's a pre-approved credit, you have to take it. If you're not using it, you, put, you can cut up your card and put it somewhere. Because when they're offering you, it's good, but it wouldn't be all the time that they offer you. So maybe in future you need the credit and you're, you go back to them and they tell you, no, you don't qualify for it. So anytime they give you credit, you must take it. Don't go spend it. It's not your money. Do not go spend it if you don't have money to pay it back right so yeah that's what i did and uh, my my they gave me more money and once they gave me more money my credit score kept going up and going up because i was paying i was being a good payer i was paying getting more i mean spending paying spending and my credit score what reached the 700s i'm like wow this is unbelievable in the 700s by the time i was ready to buy a house my credit score was over 780 points and guess where i came from 430 points so you can do it too you can do it too so get yourself ready if you have to stop making purchases if you have to borrow the money if you have to pick up extra shift if you have to do odd jobs there is so many odd jobs out there if you go in your local classified sections um, online kijiji craigslist you can find jobs to do cleaning anything that you have to do i mean any legal thing that you have to do to earn extra money you have to do it to get that credit fixed. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments section below. If this video helped you in any way, let me know in the comments section. If anybody you know needs help building their credit, maybe send them this video and let them know how I did it and they can do it too. It's as easy as that. So thank you for tuning in and like this video, comment, um, share. Thank you very much for tuning in. Have a lovely day.